Welcome back to GIS World Academy. Mohammed is here with the first tutorial of the PyQ GIS. Today, we will talk about what is Python console in QGIS, how we can add a vector data, what is map canvas and extend, and finally, how we can export a vector data. So before we start our coding, first of all, I want to tell you the structure of the new folder that I have already created. First of all, it is the geodata. I'm using the data, exactly the same data that we talked about, I think, in the third video of the QGIS. It was about how we can download the open data uh, from the OSM. But anyway, you can use any shape file that you want. It is really no problem. Another thing is a .py file. These .py files um, it is for the next sessions that I want to explain you how we can connect the, uh, uh, the Pi charm to the QGIS. And then uh, I have already created one QGIS file, just empty QGIS file, but definitely as we have already told you, uh, well, when we are creating a QGIS file, it will be really great if we have one folder as a geodata. Uh, so this is my method, and I think it is a very clean way to be sure that wherever I have a QGIS file, I have a one folder as a geodata, and everything is there. Okay, so uh, this is my PyQGIS uh, project. So how can I open my Python console, the most easiest way you can find this button, click on it, then you can access to the Python console. But the way that I really like it is a cult control and P. You can see you can easily open and close it. The keyboard is always the best way, I think. And also another way we have in the panels, yes, Python console panel, you can also open and close it from here. Okay, anyway, uh, now I want to uh, add uh, one vector layer. So anyway, as you remember, for example, here, first of all, we should define a path. So, so I should write the layer path. So for the layer path, the most easiest way is this one, but I'm not a fan of this way, you know, that I always fan of the relative path. So pyqjs buildings.shp. Okay, so this is my layer path. Yes, pyqjs and inside, no, it's not correct because I have my PyQGIS and inside it I have a geodata and inside the geodata I have yes it completely correct now okay so after that uh, I should I should add my layer I am using QGS Weg for layer. So it has two important uh, inputs. The first of the path. So I am giving the layer path and the name of the layer. So buildings. Okay. So I have my layer just now. I want to check if it is valid or not. Okay. Perfect. So it is. True. Now I want to add it inside to my project. So QGIS project. I don't like to type all of these. First of all, the class and then function and then another function inside that. In the next tutorial, I will tell you how we can summarize them and how we can make it as clean as possible. But anyway, just right now, please accept it from now because I want to teach you from the really basics and you can understand everything then add map layer so the only thing that we need we should give the layer perfecto 
you can see everything is very easy peasy so now you can see all of the data now it's here also we can check the attribute yeah everything is there perfect then another thing as i told you first i don't like to give it like this mm, i think now it's the best time that i can tell you what is the relative path also so i can say relative path so my relative path definitely should be a geodata uh, geodata and building start and search p and then i want to now i need a qgis project project path so how can I get the QGIS project path? It is I think QGS QGS project uh, dot instance dot read path. And please don't forget that these syntax are all of them are coming from the uh, C and C++ because the core of the QGIS is C and C++. It is the reason that it's super fast uh, compared with uh, the uh, ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so, but don't forget, now we are writing a Python. Uh, what happened? QGIS that means tens. Uh, QGIS, yes, here I make a very bad, I, I told you I don't like to type all of these letters. It's happening. QGIS project dot instance. Yes, <laughs> finally I become successful. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, it is true. Then we have another one. Yes. Now uh, it's layer path. Uh, as I told you, for example, I don't uh, now. I have already seen many many scripts. They are writing it like this. For example, v layer. We are writing a Python, so we should we should pay attention to all of the clean codes of the Python. So. I, from my point of view, it is not accepted, and it is not good if a person writes it like this. So anyway, so layer path now it's equal to so the first of all QGIS project path plus plus we have already write it layer. Also, I don't like here because it, it cannot remember the, for example, the variable names. So, layer path, perfect. So, I have, you can see now, and now this is the thing that I really want. Then, now I want to check if my, uh, if, okay, first of all, I sh now I should recreate my layer. Layer JS project layer path buildings perfect and also let me remove these now I will write if layer dot is valid if my layer is valid so don't forget to use a tab because it's a case and uh, because uh, it's very sensitive Python. Uh, for the tabs and for the intention i think and then then uh, i now we should say that again qgs qgs project dot instance dot add map layer the input it should be layer i hope that everything will be fine else 
yes print example not Elliot. yes perfect now it is working properly so it is not very complicated thing just i create a qgis project path and the layer relative path then i just concatenate them then i have this file and after that i create my vector layer validate it now i have my layer okay um maybe i can also uh say that you can also add this layer in another way if you don't want to do the evaluation part so uh, other way we can use the iFace package so from the iFace I will use add uh, vector add vector layer class then I should give the, the layer path you see that it is easier but uh, yes anyway I think also you can also validate this so these are the different options that you can use. And the Uji are our layer. Perfect. You see that both of them are coming. The type of both of them, both objects are QGIS vector layer. Now I also want to, for example, zoom to layer. Uh, maybe for example, it comes like this and I wanted that automatically zoom layer when I adding a layer so first of all I should create one canvas I face dot map canvas so I'm calling my canvas just check everything is can yes it's true uh, I'm creating a correct object, then extend. extend is equal to. Now I want to get the extent of my layer. So this is the this is the minimum bounding box of the, your layer. Yes, perfecto. Uh, you see that it's very easy. The I think mean of x min of y max of x max of y i think it is exactly like the thing that we have in the in the layout uh yes in the layout the extension of the layer or extension of the map then i want to say that can can uh what was my layer name it was canvas it was not a good variable name but Anyway, I should write it map underline canvas. Uh, okay, then I want to set extend. I hope that I extend. I hope that everything is fine. No, set definitely it's not correct because it should be extend x. And perfect now you can see uh, it has already it is equal to the zoom to layer you are doing the same thing when you are adding a layer and if it is not fit to fit to map canvas so we can do it like this and the final step don't forget this one don't forget to refresh your canvas, refresh your symbol. I will tell everything in the future because without refreshing uh, in this Python console, it will remember the previous comment. Okay, the last one, uh, the time of our video, it becomes long, but I should also tell the last part. Uh, output, how we can export our layer output underline uh, output underline path is equal to 
I can take a help from my previous code. You see that it is not a very logical way for writing. So I am just using previous part code. Perfect. QJS project instance read. Sorry, I didn't create a variable. I'm just directly. So in the geo data folder, create building underlying export that SHP. So this is my output path. Then I will use QGS. QGS vector file writer dot then I am using a write as vector format yes vector format function the first thing that I should give QGIS vector layer so what is which uh, so the only thing that we have is a layer so the then I should give the output output file path. I think it was a better name, but anyway, it's no problem. Then I can give the I think uh, format UTF-8. I'm in Germany. These data is for Germany. We have a lot of and CRS is also it's very important. So. The best way is like this, instead of writing, for example, now if you are in the, the zone that I'm here is uh, 25832, instead of writing like this, it will be better to get it directly from the layer. So you will write it once, you can use it in any zones, get the point. Then drive, so I can drive name. So I have already tell all these things in our event tutorial. So what is this one? Why when we are using a key value per functions and why we are using it at the end. Shape. Files. I hope that I have already write it correctly. Where you go? Oh, I forgot to close it let's see what was the problem uh, yes your drive me perfect I think we have one problem so I will give the layer it is the output layer then I'm giving the UTF 8 then I'm giving the layer and the driver name is equal to his every shape driver <laughs> boy i forgot these things okay so it's so i think it's successfully done just take a look at our geodata do we have the buildings number two no, we don't have it. Let's check it again. My output file. So, output file, output path. So, I am in the geodata building underline export. Yeah, there you go. Here is in the top. There you go. Yes. It's true. So you can see it is successfully. We have already added the data. We have already with the two different options. We using exporting. We are talking about the extent. We are talking about map canvas. In the next video, definitely we will uh, talk more detail. We will write one script and put all of this code in the functions and calling the function. And you will you'll see that how much the work will be easier thanks a lot for your time and paying attention to this video if you want to support us don't forget to like video subscribe our channel recommend our channel to your friend 
and don't forget if you have any questions comment them in the comment section below so see you soon in the next video bye